Hello everybody, I'm Chris Provost. You're watching Provost Park Pass and today just walked into Disneyland and I'm gonna be doing one secret in every land here at Disneyland. You guys seem to really like these videos. I love it when I do a video, you guys are like, do another part, do another part two or part three. It just makes you feel so good. So let's do seven, seven or eight secrets of Disneyland that you do not know, one for every land. Let's get into it. All right guys, it's holiday time here at Disney. It's awesome, it's beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna do one secret in every land. Now, before we get started, can you do me a small favor? Hit that like button and the subscribe button. That's your way of saying thank you to me. It's like free you can do. All right, let's get started here on Main Street, a secret you don't know here on Main Street. Isn't everything about it so great when you come into Disney? You got the ambiance, the sounds, everything about it there, everything around it just makes you feel good and makes you happy. I think that's why people like it so much. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right in here in this little theater. I'm gonna show you a secret you did not know here at the theater. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but they always are showing uh, little little movies in here. See you come in here? See little different movies in here? During the summertime, this is a great place to come in if you want to cool down and just kind of relax. They always have Steamboat Willie, and you just kind of relax, you got some benches. But I want to show you a secret. Now, as you exit out of it, you're going to see the little ticket taker here. And if you look right there, her name is Tilly. And where is she from? She's from Marceline, Missouri. That is important. That was Walt Disney's hometown, Marceline, Missouri. There you guys. Did you not realize that? It's got a little, a little uh, her location where she came from, Marceline, Missouri. Now, remember that name Tilly when uh, I show you the secrets uh, and for Toontown. You have to know that name Tilly. All right now, we know that a secret there here on Main Street, which is a beautiful land. I love this. We are now going to go in. Hey, normally, hi, how are you? All right, so what was I talking about? Okay, so normally when I do these videos, I always go to the right and go into Tomorrowland. With this video, I'm going to shake it up. I'm going to turn to the left. I actually prefer going to the left anyways. So we're going to go up here, we'll go left and go into Adventureland. We'll do a secret Adventureland. Then we'll go to New Orleans Square, Creative Country, Batu, uh, Frontierland, uh, Fantasyland. To town will end up in uh, Tomorrowland. So that is the plan for today's video. So I think that's really cool that they have that little homage to Walt Disney on Main Street that Tilly's tag shows Marceline, Missouri. Now, uh, you know now they don't, because they, they used to show when people would get tags. Um, originally, it would show you how long, like when they were hired, to say like, Chris hired in 1982 and had the year they were hired. And they changed that from the years, they changed it to the hometown. So then it would say, Chris, you know, like Irvine, California. Then, now they change it for the 100. It now says, Chris, your favorite character. Like, Chris, Daisy Duck. But they've always kept uh, Tilly's showing, saying Marceline, Missouri, which I think is just awesome. All right, so we're gonna go right here into Adventureland. It's interesting little fun things about Adventureland. You know, it would never be designed like this anymore. Uh, the Disney parks all have Adventureland. This one was designed, of course, in 1955 when it opened. Um, it is very narrow and very thin. And so because of that, you do get a lot of crowd and congestion. And but, so they don't do that anymore. Adventureland's an hour, all the other parks are very wide and very well open, very airy. So we're gonna walk right in here. So we're gonna walk right in here. And I'm gonna show you one of my favorite things about Adventureland. Now, Disney, when they do things like this, they, when they build or update parks, they like to leave little remnants of the past attraction or past whatever was there. So they always remember the past um, and so I want to show you what they have here in Adventureland. They have the tropical hideaway, but before the tropical hideaway, it was uh, the, awa the Aladdin's Oasis. And you'd walk in front of the Aladdin. Uh, you walk through like a little magic carpet and go into Aladdin's Oasis. They've left a little remnant here of Aladdin's Oasis here in Adventureland. When you walk into a hideaway, the tropical hideaway, you're gonna see right here on the ground there is um, this mosaic. This is left over from the Aladdin's Oasis. It is. You can see you got the you got the little. The cat opened up, it's like diamond in the rough. This is all from Aladdin, but they've left it here, which is really cool. So you can still go into Tropical Hideaway, but then you have a remnant here of the Aladdin's Oasis. You can see the, the magic lamps, all that. All right, I'm gonna give you a bonus cool thing that you can only see down here at the holidays. But I know that some people can't make it down here at the holidays, so I'm gonna show them, show you this cool thing. So I have to go into the bazaar so you understand this. All right, so right here, and you see this is called Shrunken Ned. It's like a little shrunken head here where he talks to you. And you put in a quarter, and you get like a little, you put your hand down here, and you get um, a fortune. This is Shrunken Ned, rhymes with head. But this is not what I want to show you, but you have to understand this in order to understand this really cool thing on Jungle Cruise. 
All right, so now we're outside here. And this can, this is the first year they've actually had it. It's kind of hidden. You can't really see it very well until I get closer to it. But the, in this Jungle Cruise Christmas tree, there is a shrunken Ned ornament head that's tucked right in there. So let's see if I can find it. Do you see that right there? That's a shrunken Ned head. <laughs> it is, this is the first year I think they've had it. It's on the Christmas tree right there. I'm trying to hold it right in the center of the screen. See his bushy eyebrows. Right above the piranha skeleton. And right below it. How cool is that? They've added a shrunken Ned ornament head. All right, now we're walking into uh, New Orleans Square. And I'll show you something here uh, that most people just don't really know or pay attention to. I'm walking into uh, New Orleans Square. Now this is the new Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. I'm gonna come do a deep dive and show you all the history about that in a future video. But right now we are doing one secret in every land. So let's go into New Orleans Square. What is the best land? People ask me that all the time. New Orleans Square, I think, is just the best thing. It's so good. I love Adventureland, but New Orleans Square is really special. If you go to DCA, that's an easy, that's a no, that's hands down Cars Land. No problem there. Here in California, though, man, the, the, the lands are so well designed. It's hard to choose a favorite, but, but uh, wow, I have to say, uh, New Orleans Square is beautiful. In order to see this little secret, we're going to walk through these aisle, these little alleyways to the back of New Orleans Square. All right, so we're walking back here, guys. All the way back. This is the little perfume company, and we're walking over here. All the way back to where the bathrooms are. Everybody knows that this is where you go for the bathrooms, right? If you look up, that's the exact same poster that they have in their in the girls' apartment, and they have it here in New Orleans Square. So there's a little friends connection right here at Disneyland. All right, so our next stop we're going to be going to, we're going to now walk down into Critter Country, and I'll show you a little secret revealed in Critter Country, and I mean. Thank you. I just want to say, take a quick little moment just to say thank you for being here and watching the videos. I appreciate it and I hope that you guys are learning something cool uh, because the people, if you're watching this video then you're a fan of Disney or you like Disneyland or you're missing Disneyland or you're thinking about Disneyland and so I hope that you're enjoying this video and just and hanging out with me. I always like to think of it that you're here with me just walking and talking and you know if, if you were here maybe we'll grab a beignet or maybe talk a little trash about baseball or you know go ride a ride together. That'd be fine. All right, let's go into uh, Critter Country. So we're walking into Critter Country. It's a little kind of crowded because they have this fence here. But you can see that they're doing like construction, turning it into Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I'm going to show you something else kind of cool here. Um, but we don't get to see every day, but we have this fence here. And then it goes down this way and we'll show you where the log flume is, where the, the log comes down, it comes back. They have that closed off as well, look. This is where the log would come back and you used to be able to see it and they actually have it. You see that they've actually covered it up with planks and they've been walking on it and doing some kind of work on it. They have a little pathway that is kind of, a lot of people don't use very often, but if you look down here, you can also see where they're working on it. They have the plank on for the new Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Very cool. All right, we're walking here into Critter Country. It was Bear Country, and uh, they rethemed it for uh, to Critter Country when Splash Mountain opened up. There still is a little bit of Splash Mountain here. Um, right there is a little tiny store right back there. It says the Briar Patch. You can see the Briar Patch. And the Briar Patch is from the story of the Splash, uh, from, what is that, uh, Song of the South, I guess. And so, but they call it the Briar Patch. And that's still here. So there is a little remnant of Splash Mountain. Um, but I'm assuming that that'll probably change when Tiana's Bayou Adventure opens up. It'll be a new gift shop for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And here's Winnie the Pooh. And we're gonna go down here and take a look at an old remnant from uh, Bear's Country. All right, so before it was uh, Critter Country, it was, it was Bear Country. And one of the characters, her name was Teddy Barra, and she had this thing here called the Swingin' Arcade. When you go in there, it wasn't really a true like arcade where you're thinking of. You go in there, they had food, they had pretzels, they, it's like they had like this 
like a kind of like a, a bar area where you can put your foot up and rest your arm in the bar, like a big mirror, so it looked like a mile long bar. But it's called Teddy Barra's Arcade, Swinging Arcade. And the reason they called it Swinging Arcade is because in the show, Country Bear Jamboree, Teddy Barra would come down and she would do a swing. They still have it in Florida, but they have a remnant here of that old show here in Critter Country. Right here at the very end, you can see it right there. It says Teddy Barra's Swinging Arcade. That is from when, that's the, this was the entrance here to the whole uh, Teddy Barra's Swinging Arcade. They left that up there. It's still there. You can still see it is as it was. It's an old remnant of Bear Country. All right, so now we gotta, we're gonna go back in. I'm gonna go into uh, about two Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. But before we get there, I'm gonna actually show you uh, my, one of my favorite things uh, for Frontierland, but you have to be, be down here to look at it. So we'll do Frontierland Secrets Revealed. You guys know the Mark Twain, right? The Mark Twain is an amazing boat and uh, you get on it, you go around. And so uh, anyways, Tom Sawyer Island is in the center and Mark Twain goes around it. So people might debate with me and say, Chris, is this New Orleans Square or is this uh, Critter Country? I'm not exactly sure, but Tom Sawyer Island, I think is firmly in um, Frontierland, but there is pirates, so it could be New Orleans Square, so, and then the Mark Twain is New Orleans Square, so who knows? But the Mark Twain has three levels, and on the top level, um, there's, you know, they have a railings. Well, when they started doing Fantasmic, they had to take those railings off, so that way when we go at nighttime, um, people, you could see the dancers up on the, uh, they're dancing. So they took a lot of those railings off that, and, and moved them down, but they left a remnant and they put the remnant on uh, Tom Sawyer Island, which I think is part of Frontierland. So let me show you that. So right here is Tom Sawyer Island. You see that? That's like the fort. But that, what I want you to focus on is that white part right there, that little fence right there, that white. That is from the Mark Twain. That was on the third level of the Mark Twain. They ended up, when they redid it, they put that little part there to make a fence here on uh, Tom Sawyer Island. So part of the Mark Twain is now on Tom Sawyer Island. Does that count as a secret or fancy land? Let me know down in the comments down below. Am I missing up my lands? I'm not sure. Can we just talk, this is something way off topic. Way, way off topic. But I think it, it, it deserves a little bit of mention here in the video. Let's talk about eggnog. Because I just saw like Winnie the Pooh and La Santa and started thinking about eggnog. My wife Amanda is an eggnog connoisseur and she, oh, the canoes is yelling at me. Uh, eggnog connoisseur, she loves eggnog. And I mean, I like eggnog, but I need to find this out. Do you guys dilute your eggnog with milk? Now I know that some of you dilute it with other drinks, but when you're just drinking normal eggnog, do you drink it like the way it is, like thick? Or do you put milk in it to dilute it? I'm just curious what you guys do. I do not dilute mine. I just drink it straight as it is because I think it's really good. So I don't know why I brought that up, but maybe uh, I felt like we needed to talk about it. All right, we're leaving. Uh, this is Critter Country. There's the bear. He's got a hungry bear restaurant. He's trying to climb up and get the, the honey from the bees. Now we're gonna walk into Batu, and I'll show you something that you've probably seen hundreds of times in other videos or here in person, but maybe you didn't know a little fact about it. So let's get into uh, Batu. By the way, you'll notice we're transitioning. You see this, the, the lamps, everything here. We're doing a sweet, sweet transition. I love it, we're going in here. And now you'll notice we've transitioned. Look at this, the, it's a wood fence over there and it turns like into like a rocks and there's a lamp there. And we are now, boom, pal, straight into Galaxy's Edge. All right, we're just walking through by two. I love it, the sounds great. The sound here is very impressive. So we are gonna walk down to the Millennium Falcon. This is gonna sound a little weird. Maybe you'll understand my thoughts. Galaxy's Edge is so well hidden in Disneyland that a lot of times people forget that it's part of Disneyland. Like when you ask, like, what's your favorite land in Disneyland? They're always like, oh, Adventureland or Tomorrowland or Fantasyland. Um, but a lot of them don't even really think about Galaxy's Edge because it feels like it's removed from Disney. It feels like you're almost walking into a totally separate park. So that's quite the feat of accomplishment that they're able to do that. And then there's, because when you come into Batu, there's no references to Disney anywhere. There's no characters. I mean, you don't have like Mickey Mouse or things like that. It's 100% you are on the planet of Batu. Well, there we go. Look at that. 
This is one of the parts I enjoyed the very most of Batu is the bazaar. All of the cool little shops and things like that. It's so fun to, to see all of it. I love it. I just think it's cool. I remember the very first time I came to Galaxy's Edge. I got to come to a special sneak preview with my really good friend Frank. And uh, Frankie Jr., if you're watching, hi, buddy. Anyways, we were like kids, right? We were walking in and we were like, literally like, you know, like, like when you're junior high and you're, you're screwing around, you push your, you, you don't know what to do. So you end up pushing your friend and you feel like a bush and you're walking home and you laugh and everybody's all excited. And you're just that, you know, that crazy energy you have as a teenager. <laughs> when we entered Galaxy's Edge, that's literally how my friend Frank and I were. We were like, like just shoving each other. like, ah! And when I saw the Millennium Falcon for the first time, I literally got a little teary-eyed. It felt like I was seeing a friend, an uh, old friend for the first time, if that makes sense. Here we are, the Millennium Falcon. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna walk around so you guys can take a good look at it. But a lot of times people don't realize because we've seen it so much on film, there are only two full-size, complete replicas of the Millennium Falcon built. There's this one, and there's the one in Florida. Now, for the movies, they would build the sections of it, but they never built a full-size whole thing. It was just like, you know, as a set piece for the movies. But here it is. It is the full Millennium Falcon, you guys. And this is amazing. I love it. And I can't, I'm not, I love Star Wars, but I'm not, I don't know it like a lot of other people do. But it's like called like, I think it's called a YT, YT-1000, Karelian, something like that. I'm not, some, you guys know down in the comments down below, but I love it. You got the whole side here. Look at this, it's kind of got the grime and the grit on it. I am literally going to walk right underneath it. And periodically you will see steam come out of it. And it's just, so cool. There's the landing, there's the cockpit, side cockpit. I'm gonna walk right over here so you see the entrance, how they walk up the little ramp to get inside it. Chewbacca always has to duck because it's very low for him. But you can see blasters marks, scorch marks on it, on the hole. It is beautiful, it's wonderful. And yeah, so there's, I've been told by multiple people that there's only two full-size complete replicas of the Millennium Falcon, one here and one in Florida. And you guys, we look at it all the time, we don't even realize it. The Millennium Falcon is such a cool ship. I love it. It's, uh, when I was a kid, I would always like fantasize I was flying it. But for me, the, hi, how are you? <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I always loved the Millennium Falcon, but I always kind of fan fantasize flying it. Then I was like, like trying to be on like a rescue mission. I was being an X-wing, of course. But my favorite ship that's ever been designed um, is the Snow Speeder in Empire Strikes Back. That was my favorite ship, and I got that for uh, my birthday one year for my grandma. Um, she gave me the Snow Speeder, and I. <laughs> it's funny because as a kid, you know, I played with it all the time. Then as you get older, it kind of becomes a little less cool, you know. But I do, would, I never threw it away. I kept it in my closet and then like when nobody's around, I'd take it out, still. <laughs> but here's the message. You know, you know what? If you were, if you were, if you like something, just like it. Don't worry about what other people think. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's continue on with some cool secrets here at Disneyland. This could be one of the best transitions of all the lands. You see how the stone is cut with like lasers that melt the slag there, whatever they do. And then as you go along, it transitions into the wood lines match up with the um, with the laser lines and now you are in Frontierland. I love that. I already know that we kind of did the Frontierland, that was the Mark Twain, but then maybe, I, and now I'm kind of worried that maybe I messed that up, the wrong land, I'm not exactly sure. So I'm gonna show you one other little thing, this is a little fun thing to take a look at here for uh, uh, Frontierland. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, fantastic ride, but you know when you're riding Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, what happens, you go up the third hill, boom, dynamite, explosions, but where's the plunger that sets off that explosion? I'll show you. All right, so this is the little entryway there, but if you look right over here, what do you see on that rock right there? There's the plunger. That's what sets off the dynamite. Let me move this down so you get a little, there we go, no sun. There it is, the plunger. All right, let's transition into Fantasyland. Fantasyland. 
If you could be a cast member, which land would you want to be a cast member in? For me, I would love to be a Jungle Cruise skipper. Like, just that would be a dream. But I'd also love to work on Matterhorn. I think Matterhorn would be so fun. Hi, how are you? Oh, you're amazing too. Uh, I would love to be uh, part of Matterhorn in Fantasyland. I just think it's cool. Okay, so for the next secret here in Fantasyland, we're gonna go inside the Red Rose Tavern. I'm gonna show you a secret that you've kind of seen before and the one that you absolutely for sure do not know. It's about Pinocchio. All right, well, since we're in the Red Rose Tavern, I had to order some food, which I did. Look at that. And this is like a, they call it large as a barge, potato barge or something like that. I don't know, it looks awesome. All right, so here I am at the Red Rose Tavern. And I'm just gonna show you something really cool. It says, be our guest. If you look right up here, you're gonna see this little clock here. This is the clock that was in the movie Beauty and the Beast. And you see the little frame around it. So that was a prop from Beauty and the Beast, a live action version of Beauty and the Beast. Now, a lot of people know this particular secret. And this one over here, you have the candelabra from Beauty and the Beast as well. But, but this one, most people do not know. Do you see those keys on the frame right there? Tom Hanks, they did a remake of Pinocchio, and Stromboli locks up Pinocchio. Those are the keys from the movie uh, Pinocchio, Tom Hanks. All right, now that we're outside, and then we're gonna go into, let's go into Toontown. Toontown, now remember at the very beginning of this video, I introduced you to Tilly, the ticket taker, who's from Marceline, Missouri. You have to remember that when we get to Toontown. All right, now we gotta go into Toontown. Toontastic. All right, we're walking into a little Toontown. I, I really like it. I actually have always enjoyed Toontown, um, but it's really had a lot of brand new life breathed into it because of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. First viral video I ever did for Provost Park Pass was Toontown Secrets Revealed, which is crazy. I didn't believe that Toontown, people, I did that, people loved it. There's also, a long time ago, there's a video game called Toontown with Disney characters, and I played that game um, called Toontown as well. All right, so there is a lot of secrets here in Toontown, by the way. So let's get into and show you a really cool uh, secret here in Toontown. All right, so here's the El Capitoon Theater, where Mickey and Mickey's Runaway Railway is. Let's walk forward. All right, so here we are at the ticket booth. You see this different little ticket booth. The lady who is here, remember, you see that character? She's from the Goofy movie. It's the mom They went there to uh, Lester's Possum Park. Well, anyways, if you look here, it says on break, catch you a movie. But what do we see over here on the wall? Post-it notes. And what does that one say? Call Tilly because she's the other ticket taker on Main Street. Oh my gosh, it's all connected. All right, now we're exiting out of Toontown. Can you believe that? They have Tilly referenced here in Toontown. Okay, now we're exiting out of uh, Toontown. Let's go to Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland! Dun, 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 dun. Let's go to Tomorrowland. All right, we are now heading into, uh, walk past uh, Matterhorn and go into Tomorrowland. We're walking into Tomorrowland, but I want to show you the Autopia cars. I actually really do like Autopia. <laughs> I know a lot of times people are like, ah, oh, Topia. But I think it's kind of fun. And my son Miles loves it. And like, you know how like when you ride, I can't see it right here. I have to find, you know when you're riding Atopia and all of a sudden it goes like the cars go off road. Like, oh, let's see if I can find over here. Miles, when he was very little, with the, I'm like, you're going off road. He would like kind of panic. <laughs> and he's like, I'm like, hey, dad. I'm like, you got it, you got it. So there's like the little off-road section. I love that, I still love that. You just have to absorb it like a sponge that time with your family, because it goes by quickly. I know sometimes you don't, what's that saying I hear moms always say, the days are long, but the years are fast, something like that. Yeah, it's very true. When I was little, Space Mountain was my, I'm sorry, not Space Mountain. Tomorrowland was my favorite land as a child. Like I wanted to spend my whole day in Tomorrowland. I wanted to do Space Mountain, and then I go to back to Star Tours and Space Mountain, Star Tours, and just go back and forth and then hit the submarines and then go back and maybe hit Autopia and then back to Space Mountain. I thought it was the perfect land. Uh, now that I'm older, a lot of people like Tomorrowland feel like it need needs a lot of love. It still has some really good uh, memories for me though. All right, so here I am in Tomorrowland. I'm gonna show you something you probably walk by a lot if you come to Tomorrowland. You've never really given a lot of thought about it. Let's check it out. It's called a Kugel ball. Kugel. What is Kugel? Kugel, I guess. 
That is a German word. I don't speak German, so probably people in Germany are like, you're slaughtering that Kugel. It means sphere, sphere. All right, so here it is. This ball here, it weighs 12,000 pounds. And what they do is they spray water, immense pressure of this water. The water is coming up with such a high force that it lifts the ball up and it rests in the water. So that way you come in and you can spin it. Even though it weighs super heavy, it's easy to move. 12,000 pounds. Now, if you were to remove this boulder, the water would shoot to over 150 feet in a high in the air. Incredible pressure. Did you guys know that? The Kugel ball here in Tomorrowland. <laughs> Yeah, can you believe that? That's the Kugel ball. It's a sphere, and even a little child can spin that. Massive pressure, water pressure. By the way, if you haven't hit the... Wait a minute. Did you like this video yet? You didn't? Okay, well, let's just keep going on. Uh, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. You are amazing, absolutely amazing. All right, I am gonna go meet up with a friend real quickly. Or maybe I'll have him say hi, and then I gotta talk to you. So let's go do that. So you guys know I told you I was meeting up with a friend? Who is it? Well, he didn't show up, so I found Adam. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> so fun. I had my coffee earlier, but now I'm having a. Uh, what do you got there? Sugar free Minute Maid they have up in the DVC Lounge. Adam just took me up there. Yeah. My first time ever going up the DVC Lounge. What'd you think? I loved it. It was really cool. They have, they have like beverages. <clears throat> you get to sit in the balcony and look over everybody. And it was, it was really fun. I loved it. So Adam and I are just, he just got here, got here last night. He flew across country. Blue cross country, a boy, or my on fire. <laughs> that's that's my shtick. <laughs> hey guys, I just want to take a quick little moment in this video to talk to you. And I am talking to you. I just want you to know that sometimes this world, I, there's a lot of anxiety going on right now. And we get kind of all spun up and we're white knuckling it and we have a lot of worries, we have a lot of insecurities and we have a lot of things going on and we're worrying about this. I want you to know that you are awesome you are a rock star i think you're amazing and if you're having a lot of anxiety and you're feeling a little unsettled a little un you're a little just ah take a deep breath do it with me and know that i think you are wonderful you've got this you can handle anything don't forget that all right let's continue on the video those were some secrets in all the different lands do, 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 do. Boy, is the Tom Sawyer Island in Fantasyland? Not Fantasyland, I meant to say Frontierland, but I messed up and said Fantasyland, my bad.